responding in the Bronx, home of the New York Yankees and the famous Bronx Zoo. 42 square miles of concrete, asphalt, and every kind of building imaginable, housing 1.2 million people. It's the smallest of the five New York City boroughs, yet it ranks number two in fires. Throughout the Bronx, FDNY maintains 31 engine companies, 27 ladder companies, and nine battalions. Included in these numbers is a station that's come to be known as the Animal House, one of the busiest firehouses in the world. The Animal House is home to Engine 75, Ladder 33, and Battalion 19. In 1991, they responded to over 15,000 alarms. In the last 20 years, they've made over 300,000 runs. As one might imagine, the name Animal House is probably the most appropriate handle for a station like this. That model's about 10 years old uh, for these quarters. Uh, it was the movie that we all know was uh, made famous by the frat house that called Animal House, and I think it was kind of a, uh, derived from that, uh, also because of the activity uh, coming from these companies, uh, the large amount of responses and fire duty by this particular house, uh, they got the nickname Animal House. I think it kind of reflects the uh, atmosphere around here. It's uh, a firehouse that's had a lot of fire activity since the mid-70s, and it, uh, you know, it's an old firehouse. It's kind of a mess around here, kind of like the uh, fraternity house in, in the movie. This place is unique. It's uh, a very tough neighborhood outside. Uh, I grew up in this particular neighborhood, and uh, it's a big difference from when I lived in this neighborhood. Uh, a lot of drug activity, uh, shootings, and of course, a lot more fire duty. This house was officially open for business on Christmas Day in 1901 as a two-piece engine company. On May 10th, 1907, Engine Company 75 was reorganized to operate as a motorized engine company with a hose wagon. Hook and Ladder Company 33 was officially assigned, and the two companies have shared these quarters ever since. During the mid to late 50s, the companies responded to an average of 800 runs per year. Runs in the South Bronx increased steadily over the following years into the 1960s. With the element of presidential assassinations and the death of Martin Luther King, the South Bronx, like many other large cities, began to burn. Arson for hire was a large factor in the destruction of the area. Sleazy landlords would opt for insurance payoffs rather than make needed improvements. The South Bronx became one big, vacant lot. The dense population shifted northwest to the Fordham Hill area, and the legacy of Engine 75 and Ladder 33 was written. Runs began to increase to alarming numbers. By 1970, the two units responded to nearly 15,000 calls per year. For people who inhabit this area, there is very little to count on or hope for, only the rage of fires, crime, and drugs. In the midst of this dim picture, there stands the animal house. You have every kind of experience here. There's every type of building, brownstone, row frame, multiple dwelling, private house, uh, taxpayers, you got it all uh, in this response area right here. The station sits directly below the L structure, and although the trains are not visible from the street, the noise and vibrations serve as a constant reminder that inner city life is right outside the door. You get a lot of gunshots, stabbings, sometimes in the summertime, the quarters here, they're dragging the people in here. It's almost like a mass unit sometimes. Uh, also right out front is one of the biggest drug areas around here. We've had uh, guys looking out the front windows and had them open up shooting people. We had a 16-year-old girl shot here across the street just uh, a couple of months ago. She died. And the guy uh, that she was standing with, he was shot five times, and he'd just gotten out of the hospital a week before. He'd been shot six times about six months before that. In this neighborhood, you've got people from all over the world, all the islands, and, uh, and they know that if they're in trouble or whatever, they call the fire department that we're going to come no matter what it is. And we'll respond from 
to anything from water leaks to car accidents and uh, maternities, stuck elevators, any type of, uh, you know, where people need help, they know they push the button on the corner that we're going to come, whether they can speak English or, or what. A lot of people, there's not many people around here that can afford phones, so uh, the box on the corner, they know, is the place to go. On any given night tour, it's not, not unusual for the engine company to make 35 runs. During the day, perhaps 20 runs. Unlike newer departments in other areas, New York City still maintains a heavy load of fire calls. The support structure of the elevated tracks makes navigating Jerome Avenue and access to the station a virtual nightmare. Considering the current economy and its related budget problems, the men of the animal house seem to rise above it all. They continue to operate from a house that has seen no major changes since it was built in 1901. Because the house is old and it's old and it's old, although the, uh, the job would love to, uh, to make them. They think this is a 1992 house uh, but, but a 1901 opening. Uh, the, the change that we made, uh, most of, most of, a lot of the changes that we made uh, were made by the men themselves. Naturally, anything that requires uh, plumbing and electrical work, that's all done, contracted out. But uh, in a certain essence, you're dealing with a, with a hundred year old house, 90 year old house, and then there's really, how much can, can you do? The roof has been repaired several times, it's still leaking and... There seems to be a feeling in this firehouse and a camaraderie. How oh, oh yes, that, that is. Hold on, we may have a run. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yes, we have a run. Box number 3195, Grand Concourse on 183 Street. Uh, no other information, so we'll have to uh, go on our way. Nobody's there, nobody answered. Okay, I'll have to answer. I didn't realize that nobody was here. At times, I reflect back on it. I mean, the job looked like it wanted to stay archaic. I, if it was up to some of the old timers, I think they would still keep the bell system going. Most likely, probably it did have a lot to do with being able to fund all these all these programs. But it just seemed like they're so slow. When you think about a case in point is, we need a telephone. The, one of the telephones in the chief's office, the, the chief's telephone, is broken. We've been trying to get a telephone. We can't even get a telephone, and yet the police have three helicopters the other day at that incident that we had with the, uh, the bottle and the rock throwing. Members of the station include two captains, six lieutenants, 54 firefighters, four battalion chiefs, and aides. Both captains served as firefighters in these companies and returned to command both companies. These men are family. They are here to stay. They are part of a tightly knit brotherhood. Some have left to try new adventures, but return for the camaraderie and companionship. The, the fun that we have here is, is really amazing. And there's always this constant badgering of the engine versus the truck and the truck versus the engine. But it's all good natured, and as you can see, you've been here around, and it's always, always done in fun. Well, it's a pain in the neck, number one. You never sleep, you never get nothing done, because you're in and out, in and out, in and out. And uh, as the companion unit, 33 truck, uh, they get bed sores at night. We get hemorrhoids from bouncing around in the seat, going in and out all night. There's a lot of pride in just being a member of these companies. When you go to uh, some place with your uniform on, you've got your collar pins, 
Well, if people see your patches out on the street. I've gone as far away as uh, Rhode Island. Had guys come up to me. Ah, you're in the Animal House down in the Bronx, and uh, says my friend and I. We come down there and uh, follow the fire trucks. He says we see your pictures and everything, and uh, kind of makes you swell up a little bit. Especially even other guys on the job. I was on the job two weeks, and uh, I was at a fire out on the island, and some guys saw my city thing and they were in worked in Brooklyn they heard I was in the animal house they started calling all their friends over and hey this guy's in 75 the guy asked me uh, you guys doing a lot of fires said, oh yeah they had a second and a third and meanwhile I'd been here two weeks and I hadn't even been to a fire but you know kind of right then it kind of showed me that uh, the type of place I was in and the respect and everything that people had for it engine 75 and ladder 33 are highly decorated units with over 50 unit citations to their credit. Over the years, these men have been honored with their share of medals for bravery and heroism. This year, firefighter Brian Fink received two medals, one for saving a 77-year-old man trapped in a burning apartment, and another for descending into a water tunnel to rescue two trapped boys. Medal Day in New York is a time for reflection, a time for celebration, and a time to cherish the heritage of men who risk it all every day. They still make house calls, and they still make heroes.